From Weatherford, Oklahoma, this is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning, I'm Joey McWilliams, and it is a wonderful, wonderful day to be here in Weatherford on the campus of Southwestern Oklahoma State University. It is homecoming day for the football team. It is a big Great American Conference match for the volleyball team, and that's going to be taking place behind me. We are located inside the Pioneer Cellular Event Center here on campus. It is the jewel of Western Oklahoma, as it has been called on more than one occasion, and I am seated next to a great person, a good friend, and a pretty good volleyball coach as well, Coach Josh Collins. You like that introduction? That's a pretty good introduction. <laughs> if you could teach my wife how to do that, that'd be great. <laughs> well, it, it is a privilege to get to sit here next to you, and thank you for being with us here on Midwest Sports Saturday. It's great to be in Weatherford. Of course, the rain has let up now, so it looks like it's going to be a great day for homecoming, parade a little bit later on. That's taking place during your volleyball match, isn't it? I know, yeah. Scheduling? Yeah, uh, it's it's that way every year, and it's just tough when you have a home soccer match, you have a home volleyball match. <laughs> yes, that's have, right. Somebody's got to take the fall, and we'll take it this year. So. And we did get a halftime score from Sports Information Director Extraordinaire Doug Self, the Assistant Athletic Director for Media Relations, right. by the way. So have to get these names and titles in here properly. But uh, that's my Doug Self drop for the day. I don't I think like he's going to get FaceTime today. Ah. Uh. That's, you should try to schedule that in. I, I do. I do try to get it in there pretty regularly. But let's let's talk some volleyball here really quickly. Uh, you all come in, and you're going to be facing Henderson State today, and that's going to take place behind us here on a beautiful volleyball court, basketball court as well. I know you all played last night over in Rankin Fieldhouse, not far from here because there was a concert here. There was, yeah. So we, uh, we got to return to Rankin, which is a lot of fun for us. It's a fun place to play just because it's a little bit closer quarters than this 4,000-seat arena. So um, it was loud. It was, it was fun. It was exciting. So, but we're also very excited to be back in uh, Pioneer Cellular. Well, uh, while you were over in Rankin, that return uh, resulted in a sweep. So you got the 3-0 victory last night over Washita. That is the sixth consecutive GAC match that you all have won. You're at 8-2 and two on the year in conference play, 12-9 and nine overall with your record, and, and obviously a few more losses out of conference, but I think that's indicative of the schedule that you put together to play some tough Central and South Central teams. Yeah, we, uh, we really wanted to schedule in a way that would get us ready for – uh, the top half of our conference, and I think that we did that. And, uh, you know, there's some growing pains early on. We have uh, seven new players on the team, so it took us a little bit to figure out how to play Swasu volleyball. Uh, but I think that we've been doing that as of late. Well, coming in then to today's contest, uh, as you all have that that record of 8-2, and two, second in the conference, you all were the preseason favorite, although there were four teams of the 12 that received a first-place vote, at least one first-place vote. Uh, and that, that was a really – interesting preseason poll to think about that but coming in having won those six matches among those you got a victory against Arkansas Tech you got a victory against Harding as well two teams that historically in the GAC have just been really really tough for opponents to beat yeah those are two really big wins for us and uh, we got both of those on the road uh, we had never won against Arkansas Tech at Arkansas Tech um, and then it's always tough to play Harding at Harding so uh, we were very excited about those two wins and they put us in a great spot but you know who cares now we got to focus on <laughs> Henderson today you know the thing about that too is with the way the schedule runs it's a 16 uh, 16 match schedule and the, the way it runs is you you get against the Oklahoma opponents a home and away match and against the six opponents from Arkansas just the one match each season and it rotates back and forth from from year to year right you don't have to face Tech and Harding again in the regular season. Not in the regular season. <laughs> I'll tell you, I I don't look forward to facing them in the uh, GAC tournament if that's where we see them next. Just the two really, really good teams, uh, lots of weapons offensively. They play great defense. They're very well coached. So um, we're, we're glad that we saw them once and don't have to see them again. Well, that leads us to another tough team from the state of Arkansas that you're going to see only one time, but that's today at 1 o'clock, by the way, here if you are watching for Southwestern Volleyball. It's a 1 o'clock first serve from the Pioneer Cellular Event Center. Henderson State, the Reddies are in town, and this is a, t a team and a program that in the last couple of years, they are on the rise. Yeah, uh, Coach Phil McDaniel, I mean, wow, he does a great job. Uh, not only does he uh, coach well, he, he scouts well, he puts together a great game plan. 
um, and he recruits really, really well. So, um, you know, they're loaded at every position. Uh, we watched some film this morning, and uh, you just can't blink because anywhere they put the ball up, you know, somebody's going to be swinging at you. So um, it's going to be a tough match, and, and we're excited about that. It'll be fun to, to be tested, and uh, I know that they're going to be excited to play us as well. One of the players that comes in, we'll do a little bit of opposite, uh, opposition research here then, and we'll talk about your team as well and, and see how you all match up. Courtney Balf comes in, and a little bit earlier in the week, she wound up with a, an, an out-of-conference match against Christian Brothers, had a triple-double. Yeah. She she is a force to be reckoned with. She is a very, very good player, and, uh, you know, she can swing down the line. She can swing across. She can tip. She can roll. Uh, she can do anything in the book, and she's got a ton of power. She's very athletic. Uh, a lot of times when you see players like that, they won't be great in service eve or defensively. Nope, she she does it all. She's very solid in service eve. Uh, she's very good defensively. So, uh, again, um, you know, uh, we're excited to get to play against that today. <laughs> well, then, how how do you respond? We're going to get to visit with one of your players here in just a moment. And, and thank you, by the way, for uh, allowing that on a game day and get to, to visit with one of the volleyball players here. But one of the ways you respond to that is, is a player that is coming up with 5.19 digs per set, and that is Caitlin Dillon, one of your, one of your uh, longtime players. Yeah, uh, the shovel is what we call her. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's how we're going to respond to it. You know, obviously our game plan is to uh, funnel the ball to Caitlin. And uh, if we can get it anywhere on her, her half of the court, then we're usually in pretty good shape. So um, hopefully our block will be formidable to, today and, and it will be solid and closed. And if that's the case, I think that Kate will uh, continue her dig streak. And it's it is it's very impressive. I look forward to getting to visit with her. One of six seniors on this roster. Talk about having a senior laden group like this. It's no wonder that that you all would at least be picked near the top of the conference, if not the preseason favorite this year coming in, because you have so much experience coming back. Southwestern not too long ago won a conference tournament championship in the GAC. Uh, none of the girls that are playing now were on that team, but still. Uh, this is an experienced ball club. Yeah, we have uh, a lot of returners who got good experience last year in GAC play and um, a, a lot of returning starters. And then uh, even those who aren't starting, they're just great um, culture kids. They, they know what Swasu Volleyball is. And they're also ready to come in and contribute as soon as we need them. So uh, our, our experience, our uh, leadership in the, in the um, senior and junior class is just extraordinary. All right, well, we're coming down the home stretch. Again, it's homecoming day here for the football team, and that'll be taking place a little bit later on a 5.30 kickoff if you're planning on coming up to uh, the uh, Pine well, not the Pioneer Cellular Event Center. Coming up to Southwestern to watch this uh, football game today, it'll be Southwestern and Arkansas Tech across the way over there, across the street, just outside the door, as a matter of fact. So we're, we're not that far removed from watching some football. You can, football. Event you can watch some volleyball. Way. Yeah, you can get there. Yeah. <laughs> All, all roads lead from here out to that's there, right? right. That, that, that's all right. Okay, now, having them, I just stumbled through that homecoming speech. I was trying to, <laughs> to segue into the home stretch of your season. Uh, hopefully you all don't stumble as well as I did into the home stretch. So, you know, with, with these seniors and with what could be ahead, how, how do you keep the focus then in this part of the season, and, and where do you feel like you are? Are, are you peaking now? I think there's got to be a little bit of excitement about the way we're playing. But obviously, we hope that there's better play ahead. Um, and so we're just going to focus on one game at a time. Um, we understand where we're sitting. We understand what we have to do. And we understand what we can't do. We don't even need to talk about that. We just need to focus on one game at a time. Today, we play Henderson State. And that's all we play today. So that's all we're going to focus on. All right. One last question for you, and this is something that, that happened last night. Of course, when the MidwestSports.net regional footprint, we keep up with Oklahoma and Arkansas and Kansas and Missouri and Nebraska and Iowa. And up in Nebraska uh, at Kearney, of course, they're still undefeated number two in the country and uh, a tough central opponent to consider. Cameron Schuler had her streak of attacks without an error stopped last night. I don't know if you saw this or not, but she had gotten it up to 100. Yeah, that's... Now, talk about how you've had some very good outside hitters, some really good middles here. To go 100 attack attempts without an error, how tough is that? It's hard to do that without defense on the other side. Like <laughs> it's, it's, yes. it's pretty unbelievable what she's done. And 
obviously that's uh, a big part of their success. Uh, but a tip of the hat to her, and, and what, a, what a record to set. All right, Josh Collins, the volleyball coach here at Southwestern, thank you, sir, for taking time and to be with us today on Midwest Sports Saturday and success to you all today. Joey, thank you so much for all that you do for uh, the GAC and our program and, and all the, the programs that are represented on Midwest Sports. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you very much. So Josh is going to step out now, and I promised one of the seniors on this Southwestern volleyball team, and – with this promise, I will not disappoint. Caitlin, Dillon, thank you very much for getting ready. I mean, you know, you're just a little bit more than an hour and 45 minutes away from a tough conference opponent today. So thanks for sitting in. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Okay, one of the seniors on this ball club, talk about your senior year and, and obviously a winning record right now, a very good conference record. We mentioned 8-2 and two in the Great American Conference right now. How does it feel at this point in the senior year? You know, it feels pretty good. Um, I hate to say it, but we're never satisfied. You know, we've gotten um, to that point so far. We put ourselves in a good spot, but we still have a few games to go, so we're just keep looking forward. Does it feel like you're a senior at this point? It's weird. You know, I've only cried like four times, <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, it's it's exciting. I Every time we step out on the court, I make sure to not take it for granted and really appreciate everything that I've gotten to do here the last four years and um, I'm making sure I'm making the most of this last one. It is amazing how quickly the time does fly it's by. Crazy. So <laughs> you're past the midpoint here in the season. And then, uh, you know, I spoke with Coach Collins just a moment ago that you you seem to be finding a rhythm, having won six consecutive conference matches. You never want to take any of those for granted. And, and of course, now there was a loss in there to Midwestern State out of conference a little bit earlier this week. But you come back in and get the sweep last night against Washita in the other arena here on southeastern or Southwestern's campus. Uh, talk about playing here then in the PCEC. Yeah, uh, last night we had our return to Rankin. It was so much fun. Um, when you go in there, you really feel the history that this school embodies through that gym, basketball, volleyball, everything that went through there. Um, and it's just a different atmosphere to play in. It's extra loud, you know, but we love playing here in the Pioneer Cellular, too. It's a great, great place. Great facility and a, and a great place to watch some volleyball. So, again, I encourage you, if you're watching this live, please do come out and uh, support uh, Southwestern if you're local. And if you're making the trip over here from Arkadelphia, then come out and support the Reddies today, too, because they're going to be your good GAC match. You have 5.19 digs per set. Now, I don't – I may have heard – uh, Coach Collins say shovel before, but uh, if I hadn't, that's a great name. That's a lot of digs per set. You know, and but that's what I'm back there for. That's my job. <laughs> okay. uh, I got to gotta do what I got to do. You know, do. nothing else to do. <laughs> Just out here suited up, so why not? I'll, I'll get more than five <laughs> digs per set. You have to be agile and you have to be prepared, though, to do that. Mm -hmm. So what goes into preparing to, to be able to, to be that mobile? Uh, we just do lots of good drills and practice that um, test different situations, different scenarios. Um, I really work well with my front row. We talk about block setups and where I need to be when they're in a certain spot. And um, we really work well together that way. I saw 73 assists so far this season, eight service aces. The only place that I saw the big goose egg was in blocks. You're not up there on the line? <laughs> I, I was just talking to Doug the other day about how before I graduate, that's my goal. Is <laughs> to get one of those blocks. Okay. Well, let's talk on a personal note then. Uh, as you were featured this week in the OklahomaSports.net Spotlight, and you're a huge NBA fan. The season has started. Oh, yeah. Yes, it has. <laughs> so who do you, who do you cheer for? Uh, I'm a OKC fan all the way. You know, this year is going to look a little different for us. but um, I'm That was still... an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have I have faith, you know. I have faith in our boys. Uh, Stephen Adams is going to go out there. Chris Paul came home, so that's really exciting. And um, my family, we go to lots of games. It's kind of a fun thing that we do, uh, share some season tickets. And so I get to go pretty often and support. You're also a marketing major and expecting to graduate, as you would imagine, a senior this year in, in May of 2020. And that's where we are, not only in, in your life, but in the world. We're, we're almost to 2020. That's amazing to think about that. But a marketing major, and, and what do you look to do following your time here at Southwestern? You know, I wish I had a good answer for this one. <laughs> uh, it's still up in the air. Um, I would love to potentially coach one day or even end up in the sports marketing world um, is where I plan to use my degree. 
Well, I hope that we have an opportunity to visit with you more, and, and maybe there's a place for you at, at MidwestSports.net. But uh, talking then about volleyball as we wrap up our time with Caitlin Dillon, a senior defensive specialist here for the Lady Bulldogs of Southwestern. A tough match today, and, and you face Henderson State. Uh, what do you look for coming in? Um, I just want us to go out there today and play confident. We do best when we're confident, we're aggressive, um, clicking from the f- – First person out on the court to the last person on the sideline, uh, through and through. It's a team effort. We need everyone in this game today, and I think we're excited. We're ready to go. All right, big match today, Henderson State and Southwestern. It's going to take place behind us in a little bit more than an hour and a half. Caitlin, Dylan, thank you very much for taking time with us today. Yes, thanks for having me. All right, I know that she's going to go with Coach Collins there in here in just a moment. You can go ahead, and I don't, I don't want to get in trouble keeping you here too long. <laughs> And we will look down now at uh, some of the lineup now for Division II football in the MidwestSports.net regional area. Well, there are 14 teams in Division II that remain undefeated right now, and this is throughout all of Division II, two of them in the MidwestSports.net area. Uh, those two are Central Missouri and Washita. Now, Washita played on Thursday night. It got cold in this area, and the weather forecast says it's going to be getting even colder uh, throughout Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, down into Oklahoma and Arkansas. It looked like it was a little bit colder watching this game online. Washita comes away with a victory over Southern Nazarene, moves to 8-0 and on the season. The Tigers trailed 13-7 at the half in Bethany and were able to come back and get the win, shutting out the Crimson Storm in the second half. A strong north wind blowing rain all over the field, and I know uh, that this is nothing uh, new to, again, teams at this point in the season are going to be seeing the inclement weather a little bit more and more, and so this is where it, it looks like does a ground game come into play, and if so... Washita was there with the answer. Brockton Brown, 20 carries for 157 yards and three touchdowns on the evening for the Tigers. And the number five Tigers, again, coming away with the victory 27-13 over Southern Nazarene, 8-0 on the season. For Washita, O'Shea Pruitt with 10 tackles, Keandra Evans with eight tackles and a blocked extra point attempt. Southern Nazarene, uh, can, uh, two and six now on the season. Looking at today's schedule now then, the big game in the Midwest has to be this one. It's Central Missouri. It is home for Central Missouri, and they're taking on, the Mules taking on Pitt State. The Gorillas coming in just outside the top 25. I would say it's at number 26 if you were to give them a number in the rankings this week. Number 26, Pitt State at number 11, Central Missouri. Pitt State coming off a two-game losing streak now. Open the season at 5-0. and oh and lost last week a heartbreaker to Fort Hayes State after losing the week before to Northwest Missouri. 42-41, the final last week there in Pittsburgh. And coming in then to today, the Gorillas and the Mules, 5-5 five and five against one another in the last 10 meetings. Central Missouri, 7-0 and on the season, and these numbers really speak for themselves, and we've talked about this with UCM over the course of this football season 563.1 yards of total offense that's number one in division two 50.9 points per game that's number one in division two and Brooke Bowles 336.4 yards of passing offense that's good enough for number three in division two Bowles had 520 yards of total offense against Missouri Western back in week three and that was the largest number uh, of yards compiled by a single person for total offense so far in Division II this season. Bowles with 2,213 passing yards on the year. The top two games, by the way, in Division II for total offense, well, since we're on that number and we're promoting the Mules, it looks like right here, top two games in total offense this season in Division II were both from UCM. 700 to 687 yards of total offense. Number 14, Northwest Missouri. It's homecoming in Maryville, and the Bearcats are tanking on Lincoln. The Blue Tigers, Hosea Franklin, is number three in Division II in rushing yards per game, 153.1 rushing yards per game. He has 1,059 rushing yards already on the season. And, well, you know what? He's going up against the team that leads the conference in rushing defense at 97 yards per game, Northwest Missouri. Here's another note about this. Northwest Missouri with 599 wins in program history. The Bearcats looking for win number 600, not only at home games, 
22 and 2 over the years. We'll take a break. <laughs> 